This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. And welcome to the program. I'm Roby Brock. As always, we appreciate you tuning in. The numbers surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic in Arkansas have been trending lower. This week, fewer reported new cases, falling hospitalizations, and smaller death rates, though any is too many. Vaccines are starting to work their way through the state, and the federal government has promised more. Just this week, President Joe Biden said he believed there would be enough vaccines in circulation for every American to receive a first shot by the end of May. That is sooner than a previously stated July deadline. And that was the precursor for my conversation this week with Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield CEO Curtis Barnett and Medical Director for Public Programs, Dr. Chriselle Nash. All right, well, Curtis and Chriselle, thank you both for being with us. I appreciate you very much. Curtis, I want to come to you first today. Let's talk about the Vaccinate the Natural State campaign that this initiative that Blue Cross Blue Shield has kicked off in partnership with a lot of other folks. Uh, tell me who all is involved with this and what can we expect? Yeah, Roby, first of all, it's great to be with you. And the Vaccinate the Natural State initiative, we kicked off last week. And really the purpose is, is to encourage all our Kansans to get the COVID-19 vaccine as soon as it becomes available to them. As vaccine development was beginning to accelerate last fall, we were already watching the data around expected vaccine hesitancy rates. You know, polls came out at the end of the year where 56% of American adults were saying they would get the vaccine once available to them. Those numbers dropped off pretty significantly by racial and ethnic groups, especially those that have been traditionally been underserved. There was also polling done at that same time around uh, the, the trust of businesses and employers and, uh, and really is being perceived by not just by their own employees, but the general public around being trusted sources of information. So as we began looking at this, we knew that there had to be a movement in our state among all the key stakeholders coming together to really hit the vaccine rates that are gonna be needed to eliminate the virus from our, from our daily lives. And we also knew that the employers were gonna be a critical part of that. So when we launched Vaccinate the, the Natural State last week, there are two major focuses. One is business leadership. And there we're working with the Arkansas State Chamber, Randy Zook and his group, Ray Hanley and the Arkansas Foundation for Medical Care, Walmart, and, uh, and the Northwest Arkansas Council to really empower and support employers to be champions for vaccine acceptance in our state. We'd also commit, the second part of that was a community engagement uh, aspect of the program or component of the program. We're working with the Arkansas Department of Health, the Arkansas Minority Health Commission, UAMS, uh, the uh, uh, Northwest Arkansas Council, again, our other partners, community pharmacies, hospitals, and others to really gather together to launch public service, grassroots campaigns to get people, especially in the underserved areas, to accept the vaccine when it's available to them. Yeah, lots of moving parts there. Chriselle, speak to me a little bit about how you've got some people who are uh, hesitant to get a vaccine. Uh, Curtis mentioned some of the um, folks in minority populations who have been hit extra hard by COVID-19. Kind of speak to me a little bit about your thoughts on the fact that we've got three vaccines out there. How do you encourage people to get over that hurdle of um, not feeling comfortable about that? You know, Roby, that's a very good question. And really part of that has been a focus of my life and my career. And when I think about vaccine hesitancy, you know, underserved communities and communities of color have legitimate concerns about health care and access to the vaccine. And we want to make sure that the best in medical science is available to those most in need. We do know that minorities and people of color and in rural areas have um, increased exposure and increased devastation from this um, disease. So what we need to do is we need to encourage people and give them the correct information, right? And education is a major component across all of our different um, um, partners and for people to weigh the risks and the benefits for themselves. Now, I will say that personally, um, minorities and people of color have been involved in the development of this vaccine all through from the bench to the bedside to people in communities, grassroots working to educate people and get people vaccinated. So looking at that data, um, looking at the data, its protectiveness, um, I made the decision personally for myself and my family 
that we're vaccinated and we are we are spreading that word and our community partners are spreading that word and we have to address health equity and health disparities if we are going to end the pandemic. Yeah, for both of you and Chriselle, you follow up on this first. What is health equity? I think that's a term that we've heard a lot about. Uh, speak to me a little bit about what that is and then Curtis, if you'd compliment uh, what uh, Dr. Nash has to say about that. Sure. I'm very excited about health equity as in the media as it has been because the definition of health equity is everyone has the opportunity to be as healthy as they possibly can. Now that means a lot of different things. Yes, that does mean access to healthcare and quality healthcare, but it also means that you have to have access to safe and affordable housing, fresh food. You have to have clean water, right? You have to have in the pandemic, you have to have internet access, right? To access some of the services. Um, you have to have a quality education. So all of those things are things that uh, are needed in addition to health care. So that's health equity, the resources to, to be healthy. Yeah, Curtis, that folds into a lot of other initiatives that Blue Cross has been supportive of over the years. Uh, no question, Roby. And, you know, we've been working for quite some time, especially on the social determinants of health. And Dr. Nash did a really good job just now really ticking off some of those major issues that we've been dealing with, food insecurity being a, a big one that uh, we've been very involved with. And, you know, one thing that the, the pandemic certainly has done many things, but one thing it has done is brought, you know, even greater focuses to the challenges that we've all been facing over these past several years. And it's really accelerated our efforts in this area. So how do we address social determinants? How do we address all these other factors out there that are causing this, this, these disparities? And so I think it's a focus of ours. It has been over the past several years. It certainly is today as we roll out this vaccination effort. And I think in the future, it's going to continue to be absolutely critical that this whole notion of a whole person approach to providing care, where the, when we take into consideration not only the physical health of, of, of an individual, but also their mental health, but also the social services and all that they have available to them as well. So, Curtis, I have to ask you, too, the governor has uh, about a week ago kind of loosened up the uh, directives uh, that we've been under for the better part of a year here with uh, the uh, public health pandemic and the emergency order that he's had us under. Um, we don't have all those vaccines out there yet. Do you think that the governor is moving too fast on this uh, loosening of guidelines? Kind of what's your perspective on his latest uh, moves there? Yeah, and Roby, I think, first of all, it's hard for me to second guess the governor. I think he and his team have done just a masterful job leading our state through the pandemic, especially as we all know by now, it's the most tragic, it's the most complex, the most far reaching event of our time. Uh, we've reviewed our own uh, safety procedures that we put in place here at Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield in light of the new direction from the governor from last week. Uh, we don't intend to, to make any changes to those safety procedures uh, to us. Uh, consumer competence is absolutely critical to business viability. And as a result of that, we don't want to do anything that's going to undermine the confidence of our consumers or would place our employees at, at risk. Uh, I think as we view it, I think many other businesses are viewing it very similar. And I think the governor expected businesses to respond and view it in a very similar way. Uh, Chriselle, let's talk about the, just the hope that the vaccines give. Again, we're I feel like that we're kind of inside the 20 yard line in a football game and we're heading to the end zone for a, a final victory score here. What makes you hopeful about the outcomes here? What are some, maybe some indicators you're looking at for how the state is doing and how the nation is doing to know mm -hmm. that these vaccines are gonna get us to where we need to be? Uh, let me first say I'm hopeful on a lot of different fronts. First, as we've been looking at the most recent data, we are seeing decreases in hospitalizations. So that's a good sign, okay? Um, I'm hopeful um, because what we have now is the greatest in, in, in medical science, right? Uh, in, in terms of the development of these vaccines. Um, thirdly, we have never, in, at least in my lifetime, experienced where the, the, the best of medical care is actually potentially being targeted to those most in need and everyone in that also. So I think I'm hopeful that it's showing how we all work together and that we're all really interconnected in this. Um, and I think finally, I'll say that since um, I received my vaccine and through our work with Arkansas Blue Cross Blue Shield, I've been out at multiple um, events, uh, community clinics where we are doing vaccinations and I am seeing people lining up, lining up of all, all, all colors and, and backgrounds and, and it is, 
encouraging that we are realizing that the health of all of us is important and we have to have that, uh, that viewpoint. So Curtis, what would you say to people who are eager to get a vaccine, but maybe they don't know what direction to go? Uh, to just where, where does one find the resources to get uh, connected? Well, I'm going to turn that one over, Robert, to Dr. Nash. I think she has that information <laughs> at her fingertips. So, All Dr. right. Nash. Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, first, let me say that uh, two things. First, be uh, persistent, okay? Um, and uh, because we have more demand, then we have supply, but everybody that we've been talking about, all of our partners around the state are working on moving the vaccine out into all communities as soon as it, it, it is available to us and it meets the governor's um, um, guidelines. Um, I need you to know that there is no cost to you personally, no out of pocket, all right? When you go to get your vaccine, you should bring an ID and you should bring an insurance card if you have one. The insurance card is not to charge you it's for your provider to be reimbursed for giving you the vaccine. So how do you get it with all the stuff that's going on? Well, we know that there are lots of challenges out there and all of our partners are working on that. So if you have internet access, you go to healthyarkansas.gov, that's the Department of Health's website, and it shows you and it has links to all of the different vaccine sites. If you do not have internet access, you can call the COVID-19 call center at 1-800-803-7847. And there will be a representative there that can help you uh, to tell you how to get uh, to where you need to be. And if, you're an, if you have an employer, we will be working on vaccine clinic there. So we're gonna have multiple opportunities and we'll try to get everyone connected as soon as possible. Does that make sense? It does. So Curtis, let me ask you this question. You mentioned community engagement. You talked about some of the business relationships that Blue Cross Blue Shield has partnered with on this uh, Vaccinate the Natural State initiative here. Uh, is there room for other people to come on board in that initiative? Do you have kind of all the partners in place? Are you looking to kind of build that coalition? No question, Robin. We're continuing to try to build the coalition. We have, we're contacted every day from more organizations who want to be a part of this. And we've developed a playbook for how can you put on a vaccination event very effectively, and very efficiently. We're certainly willing to share that with other partners, other organizations throughout the state. And so if anyone out there is interested, please contact us and we'll be glad to work with you. All right. I get to ask you one non-vaccine question, Curtis. So tee it up. Here we go here. Uh, just this week, we have seen the new Medicaid expansion program uh, rolled out by couple of the elected officials at the state capitol, as well as uh, the governor and his administration. Uh, it's the Our Home Plan. What do you think of it? Yeah, Robin, I want to take just a second to add on to what you heard quite a bit about, and I know on your, your show this past Sunday and was covered in the, in the news conference as well yesterday. But first of all, our state's health care system cannot sustain a $3 billion reduction in federal funds over the next five years that goes to our hospitals, goes to our doctors, other medical professionals, especially as we emerge from the pandemic and the situation that we face with our Kansans who have been uh, basically deferring care in many cases, their health care needs are going to be greater. Our Kansans, many who have recovered from COVID-19 are going to have health care needs that are going to be greater than they, they have been in the past. Our mental health needs are growing. Substance abuse rates are going up. Those are going to have to be dealt with. We can't sustain that kind of reduction when you look at all the things that we have facing us over the near term. So with that said, uh, we do believe that the program needs to evolve. Uh, the Our Home program, that approach makes sense to us, and it's one that we're very supportive of. Uh, when you think about the, the health care priorities that are included in the legislation around maternal care, rural health care, uh, the needs of veterans, uh, those who've been in foster care and the formerly incarcerated, those are critical issues for our state. And, uh, and, and they're, they're those that we need to address. And we think we can make improvement in those areas and we think we should make improvement in those areas. So we're very supportive of that. We do feel like that any health improvement targets need to be set objectively. And also we think it's gonna be important that there's some stability to this population. If we're going to improve their health, then it's critical that we have an opportunity to work with them for a period of time in order to have that kind of impact. 
All right. I appreciate you sharing your thoughts on that. I needed to get that feedback from you before uh, so I can plug it into the equation of where everybody is. Curtis Barnett, Dr. Kershell Nash, thank you both so much for your time. I appreciate this and uh, we hope to have you back soon. Very good. Thanks, Roby. Good to see you.